Today our children need men and women of faith who will love, encourage, and protect them. Nicknamed Smiling Bob, singer-songwriter Bobby Marquez is reaching crowds far and wide on radio, television, and tours across the United States, Australia, and Ireland, earning Grammy nominations, CMA of Texas Awards, and many top 10 on music charts. While on the road one evening, he received a call from his wife that would test his faith. At the age of 40, Bobby was told a secret. He was adopted. This is his story. This is today's Nashville. This is Faith. Bobby, I am so excited to sit down with you. What a beautiful day in Nashville. It is. It's beautiful. Well, thank you and for inviting me here. Oh, you're welcome. Absolutely. I thank, thank you for coming out. I saw on social media, the I follow you, and you were all over the place. You just got in last night from a tour. I did. I had uh, my tip of the hat tour. Uh, we toured up up to Colorado, Wyoming, South Dakota, and it's it's just a great tour, you know, to get up there and meet new fans and stuff. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of lot lot of driving. <laughs> How long were you on the road for? A week? Uh, I was on the road for probably two weeks, about a good two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Are you glad to be back? I'm glad to be back for at least a, for at least for a little while. While I go back out in a in a few more weeks, we'll head back out. So. So tell me about you. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, I grew up in a small little town, uh, a little town called Freer, Texas. That's F-R-E-E-R, -E -E which is south of San Antonio, Texas. Uh, I grew up there my whole life. Uh, I was born and raised in Texas. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really uh, get into music to probably I was probably about 13 years old, and, and I got a good story for you too. So I had a cousin of mine. Who uh, we used to, I used to go with her all the time, and and, uh, and we just you know throw the football around, play baseball, stuff like that. He had this little Martin Mar Marquise guitar. I mean, it was just like one of the small little ones you can get, you know, for a couple of dollars or whatever. And uh, I went to his house, and we were gonna play some baseball one evening. And uh, he had this little guitar, and he was sitting there trying to play it. Okay, and he's sitting there, sitting there, and he was getting really angry and getting mad, you know, and. And I said, what's wrong? He goes, I can't play this thing, and I'm, I'm just going to throw it away. And I said, I was like, really? You're going to throw it away? He said, yeah. He actually went, he, he got the, the guitar, and uh, he went and threw it in the trash can. And I was like, okay, this this is kind of weird. <laughs> so when I left his house, I said, uh, his name was Mark. And uh, I said, Mark, I said, do you mind if I take that guitar? I keep it. He says, I don't care. You do whatever whatever you want with it. I said, okay. So I went, I grabbed the guitar. I took it home. And I just started playing like to all the songs that were on the record, and I I didn't even know how to play the acoustic guitar. Okay, so I had I had this little uh, uh, chord booklet, you know, that I had for my brother because my brother played a little bit of guitar, and so I would get that little sheet and I would sit there and I'd play it, you know, and just kind of learn. I would I would sit there by the radio and just play everything from uh, gosh from Johnny Cash to George Jones and everything, and just sit there and try to learn how to play the guitar. And then one day my mom walked in. And she goes, what are you doing? And I said, I was just playing guitar. And she was asking me where I got the guitar, you know, and I told her. And she's like, oh, my God, you sing? And I said, no, no, I don't. I don't sing at all. And she's like, well, no, you sound good because I heard you. And I was like, no, I don't, I don't sing. So that's how it all kind of started. Now, how old were you? I was 13 years old, 13 years old when, when that happened. And at that point, I just started writing songs and stuff, you know, just sitting there in my bed. Even though they were bad, they were probably horrible. <laughs> I just kind of started writing songs and until my mom told me, she said one day, and then all of a sudden I got, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. She said, uh, well, why don't you come out to all the family reunions and, and come out and play with the family? I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't know if that's going to happen. In front of everybody. <laughs> yeah, in front of everybody. So uh, I did that. I finally got the nerve up to do it. And I did it. Uh, and all of a sudden I was like, you know, people were patting me on the back going, God, you sound great. And I was like, hey, this is kind of cool. You know, I'm looking around going, wow, this is this is neat. And then I just kind of started playing from there, you know. So tell me about the guitar, though. Were you playing with the same guitar or did you get a new one? No, I actually I had the guitar for many, many years and I still have it. You do? I still have it today. And uh, but that was a guitar that I that I, I had wrote like about 10, 15 songs. My you first still songs have your that songs? I, wrote. I do. 
Yes, yes, I do. Yeah. So it, I, I mean, you know, it, it, I don't know. It was it was just quite an experience because at that point I just uh, I just fell in love with music, you know, and I and and growing up in high school when I got into high school, uh, well, I guess my whole life I, I was always a baseball player. I loved playing baseball since I was in Pee Wee League to Little League to Senior League all the way to high school. We ended up winning the state championship in high school, and I was really good. I was a really good baseball player, and and I had a lot of offers to go play Major League Baseball. What and, um, position? Uh, I kind of played everything. I played like catcher, pitcher, second base, outfield, pretty much like everything. But I had a lot of offers come in, you know, when I got out of high school. And so I had to choose because really baseball was actually really my first love. I mean, I, I, it just came natural to me uh, more than more than singing did. I don't know. After all those years, I had to sit there before I went to college. I had to pick and choose. I mean, was I going to play baseball or was I going to turn it, my music into a career? And uh, that was really hard. Uh, I had to sit down and 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 my mom was a very religious lady. I mean, growing up, I mean, we, we were always at church every Wednesday and Sunday, you know, Bible studies. Uh, she was a devout Baptist. You know, we grew up Southern Baptist. So uh, but she was always a devout Christian, and she always taught us, you know, uh, what was right, what was wrong. I don't know. I just, uh, you know, I started singing, too, in the choir, you know, at church. And I just kind of fell in love with the music thing more than I did baseball after a while, you know. And so I had to pick and choose, and I, I chose music. And um, at that point, when I was in college, uh, where'd you got, go to? Where'd you go to school? I went to UTSA, the University of Texas at San Antonio. That's okay. where I went, you know. But I started a band. I got a band together called, uh, it was Bobby Marquez and the Out of the Shoot Band was what I had. Well, actually, it was, it was actually the Hired Hands was the first band. And then my second band was the Out of the Shoot Band. And uh, I just kind of started playing, you know, uh, uh, and we would do all kinds of parties and weddings and just all kinds of stuff. And then, you know, I just kind of made it a, in, into a career until all of a sudden everybody was telling me, why don't you go to Nashville? You know? How old were you then? Oh, gosh, I was probably... I don't know, maybe 22, 21, 21, 22 years old when that happened. I just had to, I went out there and just started playing and, and, and then, you know, getting more, more shows. And, and then all of a sudden it was like, everybody kept saying, Hey, look, you know, why don't you go to Nashville? And I was like, well, yeah, you know, I guess we, we could probably, but I was scared to death. I, cause I didn't know anybody. I hadn't been out of the state of Texas my whole life. <laughs> I mean, I was in this small little town of 3000 people and I had never, you know, been anywhere else, you know. So it was quite a, quite an adventure for me. But when I came to Nashville, how'd you get here? Oh gosh. Okay, it's a, it's a funny, it's a funny story because <laughs> I had this little Corsica. It was a Corsica Chevrolet, and uh, my dad had got it for me, and uh, it was a used car. And uh, I was, I was driving that, you know, when I was in college and stuff, and that, that's what got me here. But the funny story was. I got all the way to Jackson, Tennessee, and it broke down. Oh, no. Oh, no. I broke down. I'll never forget. I had to stay at a hotel that night, and I was like, this is not going good. I'm like, here I am coming to Nashville, and I've already broken down. I don't have hardly any money. I'm staying with a friend of mine who was a drummer uh, up here in Nashville, and we're living on the bad side of town, you know, just to try and be a singer and a musician. And I'm like, wow, this is this is crazy. But, you know, it, it, it all worked out after a while, and... uh you know, until I started meeting more songwriters and and friends and stuff and started trying to get more to the business, you know. Well, I tell you, Nashville is the place to be. And but when you got here and we're going to talk about this when we come back, your life changed dramatically uh, in the music. And then you're uh, finding out who you really were. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to talk about it when we get back. Mm -hmm. 